Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to the Money Markets and Mindset Podcast. I'm your host, stock market coach and option trader, Jason Brown. And in this episode, I want to talk about money, more specifically, the three different types of income streams. You see, I get asked a couple questions pretty often. And one of those questions is, do you make more money from YouTube? Do you make more money from trading stocks? Do you make more money from selling courses? And the other question I get asked pretty often is, how long does it take to go for a person to go full time in the stock market? You know, people want to quit their job. I want to do this full time. And I think the bigger question or the bigger discussion is not necessarily how much money I make or not necessarily um, how much do you need to make to go full time in the stock market. I think the bigger question is how many streams of income do you have? And so I once read or heard that the average millionaire has seven streams of income. And so what I want to do is I want to break down my streams of income because last time I checked and counted, I had eight streams of income. And so I want to break those down and hopefully open your eyes up to what's possible and more so how you need to earn money versus worrying about if one thing is making more money than the other or versus uh, trying to put all your eggs in one basket with respect to the stock market and have that take care of your lifestyle because really you don't necessarily control what happens in the stock market you don't control how fast the money comes you don't control when the trade will mature and so trying to treat it like a job will just not bring unnecessary stress to your financial situation because you don't necessarily have as much control as you think although you do have strategies and different things that you can deploy you don't control when those strategies mature, if that makes sense. So before we dive into my eight streams of income, let's talk about the three types of income, because it's important to be educated on the way that you make money. And so the first stream of income that most people are probably familiar with is earned income. And so this is income directly from your labor or directly from you putting in hours. Typically, you know this as working a job, right? So you go to work, you get paid, you don't go to work, you don't get paid. So that's earned income. You have a direct correlation as far as hours traded for dollars that will actually uh, you know, compute to how much you're going to make on your paycheck. So that's the one that most people are familiar with. Now let's talk about the other two that um, not everybody's familiar with or not everybody makes money in these areas. So the second way is portfolio income. Portfolio income is income generated from the sale of an asset. Now that's assuming that you bought the asset at one price and you were able to sell it for a higher price. That's considered portfolio income. So that's gonna be um, your stocks, that's gonna be your options, it's gonna be any asset that you can buy at one price and sell at a higher price. So portfolio income. The third income is passive income, which is also one of my favorites. Okay. So portfolio income is one of my favorites and then passive. So passive income is income that you do not actively have to earn. You do not actively have to participate to earn it. So what do I mean by that? I want you to think about real estate or more specifically a rental property. So once you buy a rental property and fix it up and rent it out, you get a check coming in the mailbox every 30 days. So that is passive. When you think about the asset, how many times did you have to buy it and fix it up? Well, if nobody tore up the house, hopefully once outside of you know some general maintenance, but you typically only have to buy the house and fix it up once, but you get a check every single month from renting it out. So that's passive. You're not actively going over to the house and doing some work in order to get that check. You've already provided the asset and have put it to use, providing a benefit to somebody else, and then you reap the reward every 30 days. Now, another form of passive income could be royalties from music, could be royalties from a book. And so when you think about an artist, your favorite artist, it could be 
um, you know, your favorite pop, rap, R&B, doesn't matter. They typically record the song once. They recorded the song one time, but every time it's played on the radio, every time somebody buys the album or in this day and age, every time somebody downloads or streams it, okay, a little bit of that money, the pennies um, on the dollar gets paid in royalties to the artist who created that initial work of art. And so now you may not be a singer. You may not be uh, an actor creating a movie where you can get royalties from. You may not be writing a book, but uh, there is another way that you can get passive income or royalties. Um, you know, one that I'm familiar with, which we'll talk about, but it also could be from literature or from courses, education stuff. And so you may have, again, wrote a book once or recorded a course once and you get income off of it every time someone registers for it or pays to take it or watch that information because typically the information is evergreen. It doesn't expire. It doesn't um, retire or get old. Like the stock market, for example, is the stock market. And so explaining what the stock market is, it's the same thing it was 30, 40, 50 years ago. And so that information doesn't necessarily get old. And so you can sell it or reuse it over and over and over again and get passive income. Okay. So that brings me into my eight streams of income. So let's dive into it. Let's talk about it. Okay. So these are in no specific order either, but let's state the obvious. I make money from investing in stocks and options. And as we go through these, I want to put these into those buckets. Is it earned income? Is it portfolio income or is it passive income? Okay. And so earning money from buying stocks, buying options at one price, selling them at a higher price for me, that is portfolio income. So it falls under, you know, buying an asset at a lower price, and then selling it at a higher price. The nice thing about having that portfolio income is that you can actually go do something else while it's working for you. So we'll come back and touch on that topic um, because I, I wanna talk about which one you should focus on first. Uh, but what I love about portfolio income is you don't necessarily have to sit there and watch the stock market all day. Once you put that money and capital to work, you can actually go do something else and then you can come back and check on it later and it will have earned you some income, um, ideally if it moves higher. Now, the second way that I make money, which should be no surprise, is from actually selling courses, right? So uh, I took my over 18 years of knowledge in the stock market, packaged it, bottled it up. And uh, people ask, you know, do you have a course? Can you teach me? And so there's my courses. Now, selling courses for me is a form of passive income. Because if you think about it, how often did I record the course? Well, I recorded it once. Now, you could argue that every few years we update the course. So we've, you know, recorded it a few times. But in the grand scheme of things, you record the course one time, okay? And so every time someone purchases the course, it's not like I have to go re-record it now because someone invested in their education. It's already there and it's waiting for them. So that's passive income that comes into the mailbox. We call that mailbox money, right? And so there's passive income. So that's one of the second or uh, second streams of income for me. Now, one of the third streams of income for me is my membership. Okay. So we have members that pay every single month to see what trades uh, that I'm looking at to get coached through, um, you know, potential buying and selling opportunities from an education standpoint to have access to the community forum and being there with all the other traders, access to some advanced courses, different things like that. And so when you look at membership, that is earned income. Okay. It's me working as in a job like compass capacity. Why? Because every week I have to show up for two hours, um, not including our master classes or live Q and A's, but every week showing up for two hours, looking for trades in the stock market, taking questions, answering questions, um, posting trades that I'm looking at analyzing the market. And so I'm actively working, actively participating 
in earning that income, right? If I stop showing up uh, every week for two hours, stop coaching, stop walking people through mindset and trades and strategy, then obviously no one would pay, right? So that's active income, also known as earned income, okay? So I'm actively earning it. I'm actively working for it. Now, one of the fourth ways that I generate income is through YouTube, believe it or not, right? So they call us or people like myself who create content creators, okay? And so as we create content, advertisers, we don't necessarily have a say in it, but YouTube says, hey, we're gonna show advertisements in front of your video. And for that, we're gonna pay you, you know, it could be anywhere from 10 cents to 50 cents, nothing uh, astronomical, but, if you get a video that gets a million views, right, and you get paid 50 cents per million view, um, you know, it's not bad income. But the point is, that's another stream of income. And what's cool about that one is it kind of falls under the passive uh, income portfolio because, well, I don't want to. I don't let me I don't want to use the word portfolio because I said portfolio income is one on its own. So it just falls under that passive income category. OK. And so how many times did I record the YouTube video or the podcast? I record. Well, let's just stick to YouTube video because there's no advertisement, at least not at this point on the podcast. But there are people who actually buy advertisements on podcasts. So but YouTube specifically, you record the video once, but as uh, the ads get shown in front of, and as people watch it six months, 12 months, a year from now, you still get paid for something you recorded a year ago, assuming it's, it's relevant and people are still watching it. So that falls under the passive income category, okay? Now, there's also affiliate marketing. Now, you may or may not be familiar with affiliate marketing, but it's the process of recommending something that you either use or you've tried before and you've had some type of good results. And as a result of recommending it, maybe the company, you know, shares, you know, some type of bonus or percentage of sale with you for uh, the referral. So you ever see uh, maybe someone who works out and they say, oh, I, I like this protein shake and you know, this helped me, it's the best for me, and I got a link here if you wanna get the protein protein shake. Um, it is an affiliate link, and so I do get a commission, but I only recommend things that I use and like and do I think would benefit my audience. So that person, that workout person, recommending that shake um, may be getting a kickback for recommending what they already know, like, and trust, right? They already know this company. They already like their product. They trust it. They've been using it. So it just makes sense. It's called a symbiotic relationship, right? It helps me or helps that person if they are trying to help their audience who is looking to work out or lose weight. It helps that person to have something that they can recommend that you eat or take that's going to help you in that journey. And then it helps the company because it helps them sell products. And then also helps that creator because they also get a percentage or some type of a kickback. Um, and, and, and usually it doesn't cost you anything as the consumer more. It's just the company choosing to, instead of paying for a commercial or something like that, they're willing to share that money with that influencer because that influencer may reach people that the commercial or whatever would not have been able to reach. And so they're saying, hey, we'll take a little bit of this um, profit and share it with you. OK, and so. Uh, I do some affiliate marketing. If there's a product that I, I use, I like, I love, I'll, I'll recommend it and I'll say, hey, here's a link below where you can uh, buy it as well. It is an affiliate link. Um, so it helps support the show or help support making these videos. And so that's another form of income. Now, to an extent, affiliate links are passive income because if I wrote an article or did some type of video about some product that I love, maybe it's some stock trading software, maybe it is a subscription that I use to get news from the stock market or something like that, I only recorded that video once and then every time someone watches it or takes me up on that recommendation, uh, you know, there is a check at some point cut. And so affiliate marketing is another stream of income. So 
if you look at, you know, just where we're at right now, we're at five streams. We still have three more to go. Okay. So let's talk about income stream number six for me. So income stream number six is I have a, a networking company. So we throw networking events around Metro Detroit. We typically average anywhere from 80 to 100 people at the events. And then we charge cover at the door. Um, there's sponsors who may want to sponsor to get in front of our members or get in front of business owners and entrepreneurs at these networking events. So I guess you would call it an event planning company. I'm, I'm not sure, but, um, that is a form of income for me. So that's number six. So it's just bringing people together and providing value, providing the space, providing appetizers and providing an atmosphere where people can conduct business, meet people they wouldn't have met before and, and network. Then the seventh way that I bring in income is I have a marketing and consulting company. So I've learned how to market, how to shoot video, how to uh, build a YouTube subscriber base, how to run ads on online. And so there are times where other companies, other creators, other influencers come and say, hey, you know, how did you do that? Would you either consult for me or mentor me? You know, how much do you charge to help us get our website up and running or get our ads up and running or whatever the case may be, how did you automate your systems? What tools and software are you using? And so there is a marketing and consulting exchange. And when you look at that bucket, that's back to um, active or earned income. Same thing with the networking events. Those are active or earned incomes because I have to put the event on um, show up or have someone from my team show up. We have to facilitate networking. Uh, so it's not like it's set it and forget it is is active or earned income. Same thing with consulting. I'm actually working for the company or the people who have hired me to become a consultant for marketing, for YouTube, for Internet marketing, running ads, whatever the case may be. And so I they are my boss in a sense at that point. Right. Because they cut the check. I perform and then everyone's happy, right? But it's not like, well, I'm done, pay me again, unless it's some type of partnership that we form. But big picture, in that realm of delivering services, it is linear income or it's earned income where I'm working for it, okay? And then uh, my eighth stream of income, which is actually new, this is actually a new stream of income for me, but... I think this is the first time I've, I've announced it, unless you follow me on Instagram. If you don't, uh, you probably should follow me on Instagram because I share some other behind the scenes stuff. But uh, on Instagram, I share that I just recently got my real estate license. So I have my real estate license. Um, so I'm licensed to sell real estate. Um, but uh, I also am looking to get into some things where possibly hard money lending uh, is an option where you take the profits from the stock market and then you can hard money lend it to people who need money for um, investing in, in houses and real estate. There's also some opportunity to get into fix and flips or possibly start to roll over my portfolio income and instead of paying you know maybe a capital gains tax rolling that over into uh, investment property so it just defers the capital gain tax but if you can roll it into another income producing asset like a house where someone's paying rent you get to defer paying capital gains tax but you also get passive income coming in every month so um, it, it's a really cool uh, strategy, which, you know, that's something for a whole nother time to talk about. But uh, being a licensed realtor will allow me to potentially broker my own deals, may potentially allow me to um, maybe I find a deal and pass it on to someone else. But legally, to be able to collect a commission on that, you need to be a licensed realtor. So there's all kind of uh, things that uh, having a license will, will be able to allow me to do. So that's going to be um, an eighth stream of income from me. And so when you look at 
all the streams uh, of income. Uh, let, let's just recap them again. We got investing in the stock market, which is portfolio income. We got selling courses, which is a form of passive income. We have membership, which is a form of active or earned income. I have YouTube advertising revenue, which is a form of passive income. I have affiliate marketing, which is a form of passive income. Networking and, and, and hosting events in my local city and possibly um, outside of our city, especially for our stock traders, is a form of income. And then there's also the marketing and consulting side of the business, which again is a form of active or earned income because I'm trading time for dollars. And then again, you got the, the, the real estate license, which could be a combination of earn and passive and possibly portfolio depending on how I work this new venture. So what's the takeaway as we wrap up? Well, number one, if you haven't already, be sure to hit the subscribe and the like button uh, if you're watching on YouTube because I come out with new videos all the time and you want to get notified when I drop this new content. And if you're listening on Stitcher, Radio, Android, Google Play, iTunes, uh, be sure to subscribe to the podcast as well so that you can get notified. And there's also cool things that we got planned uh, just for our listeners and people who are subscribed or people who are on our email list. So as we wrap this up, you know, we opened this up with the question that I get asked, which is which one do you make more money from or um, how long does it take for you to become financially free or independent or leave your job and just do this full time? And I think the real question you need to be asking yourself is how can you mix portfolio earned income with portfolio income with passive income so that you have multiple streams of incomes like most millionaires and then determine how much you need to make from each one of those to replace your current income. Because here's the thing. If you just came straight into the stock market and started trading full time, you left your job. And I just told you, you don't control whether the market goes up or down. You also don't control how long it takes to make your money. There's been times where I didn't make any money almost all year long, 10 months out of the year. And then month 11 and 12 is where I made a hundred or $200,000. And so are you able to sustain yourself for 10 months or 11 months without making money? And so that's where having multiple streams of income become even more important. I don't have to lean on one stream of income to solely provide for my family. And so when you think about going full time, you want to think about going full time by diversifying your streams of income and making sure you got multiple ways that you can make money. And when it comes to myself, which one do I make more money from? Well, it depends on the year. There are years where my business does better than my investments. There are years where my investments do better than my business. And it doesn't matter that one does better one year and one doesn't, or maybe the third year they do equally as well. What matters is that I've put together a combination of multiple streams of income to take care of me and my family. And that's what I want you thinking about. How can you add multiple streams of income to take care of you and your family? Last but not least, if you're thinking, okay, this is great. I'm going to start a YouTube channel. I'm going to start a website. I'm going to start consulting. I would say, take a deep breath, <laughs> slow down. If you're, if one of the questions going through your head is Jason Brown, which stream of income should I get started with immediately? My answer is going to be the stock market, not because I sell courses, Okay, not because I have a membership, but I'll tell you why. It's because the stock market will allow you to still work your full time job and you don't necessarily have to be in front of the computer every single day, right? So you can quickly get two streams up and running. When you start to look at the fact that I have a business, I have a website, I do consulting, all of those things take time, they take money, they take web hosting, it takes high end cameras, microphones. Um, at pan an editor. There's all these other things that go on behind the scenes. And most people don't have the knowledge or the capital to start a business, start a consulting company, 
um, et cetera. Now you could use your iPhone, different things like that. But again, that's a whole nother uh, topic for a whole nother day. The point is you're probably already in the stock market because you're investing in a 401k a 403b, some type of retirement plan, and you're already buying products. It's a good chance you're already watching this on an iPhone or on a, a Mac computer, or you're using Facebook, but you don't invest with those companies. So you're already using these products it's very easy to come along and hook your caboose up to well-known companies that have well-known products that you already use versus you trying to go figure out how to start a business or how to start a consulting company or how to build a huge YouTube channel. All those things take time. And when you look at my journey, I didn't start a business teaching people how to trade in the stock market first. I was actually a successful stock trader. I was actually making money from stocks and options. And then people said, can you teach me what you know? And I thought, huh, here's another way that I can A, help people and B, make money at the same time. It's a win, win situation. So that's what I want you thinking about as we wrap up this episode. So as we leave, I want you thinking about how can you create multiple streams of income, but out of all of those streams, one of the most important ones that you get started on immediately is investing in the stock market, starting to have your money work for you so you don't have to work so hard for it. I'm Jason Brown. Thanks for listening. And I will see you on the next episode. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and share this episode with a friend who needs to hear about multiple streams of income.